Hello, my friends, and welcome to another episode of the Million Pound Mission Podcast. It's your buddy, Adam, the PhD, the previously heavy dude, and this is episode number 354. We're talking about the Bub's natural story with my friend, Sean Lake. Great dude, great company, great story behind it. Uh, I think you're really going to get inspired by this one. Uh, It's not just about collagen protein. There's a lot more uh, layers behind this conversation. Uh, Before we dive into it, I want to catch up with you guys real quick. We are in week number two of our 28-day community cycle. If you've not joined the Mission Possible community, it's free. We're doing group video chats. We've got challenge week coming up next week. I'm bringing in guest speakers into the community to speak to you guys so you can learn from them directly. Uh, A lot of the people that have been guests and favorites from the podcast. Uh, So it's a great place to be if you're looking for some accountability, for some support, if you're looking for some positive momentum, head on over to millionpoundmission.com and join in on the community and join in on the conversation that we're having. Uh, a lot of really great uh, video chats happening over the last several weeks. People are just, I, I can feel the positive momentum building and that's very encouraging. And I know that helps other people when you're, you feel like you're plugged into something like that. So uh, I highly encourage you getting plugged in my friends. Uh, so this week's topic is, you know, it's kind of anti-aging, finding the, the fountain of youth, but it goes deeper than that. So I mean, the, my basic interest in this, you know, I'm getting ready to turn 40 next month. No, this month, August. It's August when this releases. So uh, I, I will be 40 as of August 26th. So I've only got a few more weeks left in my 30s. And I just find myself constantly searching for just simple things that I can add to my routine that are going to help me feel better. They're going to help me perform better. And I know a lot of you are out there in the same boat. I'm not a big like hack guy, like, oh, let's hack life. But if there's something simple out there I can do that makes me feel and perform better, I'm all about it. And this week we're talking about one of those things, uh, you know, adding collagen protein consistently and high quality collagen protein into my body on a daily basis. It's made a difference. Um, I've talked about before how this winter I was really struggling bad and struggling hardcore with elbow tendonitis, tendonitis in my forearms. Uh, I've been lifting heavier, uh, doing more dips, more push-ups, more weight on bench press, overhead press, things like that, pull-ups, weighted pull-ups, and it took a toll on my elbows and forearms. It really sucked because I couldn't train the way that I wanted to, and uh, this simple solution has really helped me out to where I'm I'm training pain-free again. So. Uh, we talked a little bit about that in this interview, but we're, we are talking to my friend Sean Lake from uh, the company Bubs Naturals, and I don't want to dive too much into the ba- his background or the background story because he tells it so well. Uh, it involves, you know, th- this company was named after a, a fallen friend who was a uh, U.S. military soldier. Um, again, I'm not going to dive too much into it. Just you guys will be very inspired by this story uh, of the company. I love a company with a strong why behind it. Sean is super driven to get this message out there and help as many military veterans as possible through their company. Uh, This is a good one. So uh, we dive into the whole why behind Bubs Naturals. Then we dive into collagen protein. We do a deep dive on it. We talk about the benefits of using collagen. We talk about effective dosing methods. Uh, things to look for to ensure you're getting a really high quality product that's actually going to work inside of your body, whether it's the Bubs brand or something else. Uh, Sean is just an open book about this. He wants to educate and get the word out there on why this is so effective and how it can help people like myself. So uh, a little bit of a shorter intro today. Like I said, I really want you to listen in to what Sean has to say at the start of the interview about his friend, uh, who is known as Bub, and uh, why they started this whole company in his honor. So uh, without any further delay, I can't wait for you to listen to this one. It's going to light you up. Let's dive into episode number 354, the Bub's Naturals story with Sean Lake. Sean Lake, welcome to the Million Pound Mission Podcast. How are we doing today, my friend? We're doing good. We're doing good. How about you? Well, I'm really excited about this because I love it when I bring people on that I feel that same level of energy with and we've had a few conversations now uh i know that you are super excited about health fitness life in general and you're gonna bring energy to my audience here today so i'm super fired up about that man 
All right. Well, I'll, I'll try and toe the line there. I, I'm not going to promise to fire off any burpees or anything, but uh, let's see what we can do. He may do spontaneous burpees. We'll, we'll sound the burpee alarm uh, randomly here, guys. Uh, all right. So uh, your, I, I don't want to get into too much information from my angle. I, I want to start with your story. Uh, you come from Bubs. Uh, we'll get into the whole Bubs platform and all that, what you guys are all about. But tell us of the story. I love the fact that your company has such a large why behind it. And there's an emotional component to why this whole thing is happening. So why don't you start off with that story for us here today, Sean? Yeah. Um, well, I, I guess I'm going to rewind to to middle school, which is kind of where the why for Bub started. Um, my closest friend growing up, um, kind of high school into the college years, was a guy named Glenn Bub Doherty. Um, now in high school, he wasn't named Bub. He was just Glenn Doherty. Glenn was this like social glue to a really large group of friends in a little suburb in Massachusetts. We, we grew up in Winchester, Massachusetts together. And Glenn and I just kind of locked up early on, had similar, you know, just kind of life views. We're both middle children. We're both problem solvers. We both had a very interesting family dynamic that we could relate to, um, similar music, you know, just culture, lifestyle, you name it. We both were going to go ride skateboards around or play hacky sack and go listen to alternative music and, um, and run amok. And so when all of our friends went to college, Glenn and I did the most counterculture thing we could think of. We moved to Utah to become professional ski bums. Nice. Now, anyone from New England knows that you are literally bred and educated along the path of high school to go directly to college to get your four-year degree and go join the workforce, get married, knock out kids, and boom, you're off and running. And every one of our friends did that, except for Glenn, except for me. We dropped out of college. We moved to Utah. He had dreams of being a professional skier. I dreamed of being a professional snowboarder. Now, this is in the early 90s. This is like 92 to like, you know, 98 and stuff. And we're living in Utah. We're ski bumming it up. And all of a sudden, we're turning 25, and Glenn kind of goes, you know, if I haven't made it as a professional skier by the time I'm 25, I think I'm going to quit all this, and I'm going to join the Navy, and I'm going to become a Navy SEAL. And, and I'm on the other end of that conversation going, what? Like, you mean like that Charlie Sheen movie that's out? That, <laughs> that Navy SEAL? <laughs> And and, because remember, this is in like 1995. Like we didn't know anything about the Navy. And Glenn's like, yeah, you know, I I went on this one surf adventure. I met these guys. They were Navy SEALs. They said I had what it takes. So I'm I'm, I'm just, I want that challenge. I said, okay, if you're serious, I will drive you to the recruiter. And I did. I drove him right down to the Navy recruiter in Sandy, Utah. And Glenn signed his contract, signed his paperwork, swore me to secrecy. We didn't want to tell any of our ski bum friends until it was, you know, his to roll out. And I blinked and, you know, nine, 10 months later, I'm going to Coronado to Bud's graduation to watch my best friend uh, join the SEAL community. And that was sort of a step into this broader set of relationships for me. Like here I am, long haired snowboarder. And, and my solution to turning 25 was to go back to college. So I went and got my degree while snowboarding. Glenn joins the Navy and is getting deployed, you know, all over the world. And we reconnect when we're turning 31 or so. Um, We'd always been in touch, like writing letters and emails or in the early stages back then. And, you know, we're talking as much as we can because, again, Glenn was this kind of like a Facebook before Facebook. He kept in touch with all these different groups of friends from high school to his Navy buddies, to his Utah mountain buddies, kept everyone connected. And I was right in the middle of all that with him. So in, when I turned 31, I left the mountains. I took a job with Burton Snowboards to become the team manager of this young kid named Sean White. And I had to move to Encinitas, California. Well, Glenn was living just down the street in, uh, in Coronado. So we got the band back together. He was home. He wasn't deployed. And all of a sudden we're right back to where we left off. Uh, the difference is we were down here. Um, and it's funny cause like Sean White joined us for Christmas dinner one year. That's awesome. 
which, you know, is really funny to look back at, like all the connection points of having Glenn, my mom, Sean at the dinner table, all hanging out together. <laughs> um, and, and, you know, and so Glenn does another couple of years in the Navy. I'm in the action sports industry now. I end up working with Quicksilver for six years doing sports marketing. And that's really my bread and butter, like being a snowboarder into the action sports world while Glenn is off serving his country, you know, for, for 10 years. Well, fast forward to Glenn getting out of the Navy, he gets a divorce, and that's not uncommon in that community. And all of a sudden, we're living both in Encinitas, and we become roommates. Um, I'm no longer working with Quicksilver. Glenn and I are working out at this local gym called Seal Fit, which is like a breeding ground for young kids that want to join the Navy. And he's contracting for the Central Intelligence Agency. And what Glenn's doing is he's providing security work. So they have this, this team called the GRS and, and he's on GRS and he would just deploy every couple months, go and he'd make tens of thousands of dollars and come home. And it was really great money, but it was really, really bad work. Um, long hours, unforgiving, huge wear and tear on the body. And, and he would always come home exhausted and he would need like those couple of months to kind of like get back to normal and then he'd go right back in. It was a pretty vicious cycle. And, and he knew, Lan, there's no long-term health benefits. There's no insurance. There's no retirement plan. It's just really good money. And so fast forward to 2012. And it's, it's the fall of 2012. And Glenn gets stationed in Tripoli. So Libya had just fallen. You know, uh, Gaddafi was just kicked out of office. And... Um, Glenn goes over there as one of the first missions into the country. And a day later, right after he got there, there's this terrorist attack in Benghazi, Libya. Now, if that pings anyone's ears, it's because the terrorist attack in Benghazi, Libya on 9-11 in 2012 killed four Americans, including the U.S. ambassador to Libya at the time, this guy, uh, Stevens. So Glenn was one of the four Americans killed saving all those American lives. Um, and they made a movie afterwards called 13 hours. And there was a congressional hearing where Hillary Clinton got in a bunch of trouble and there was politics and just stuff swirling all around. Well, Adam, my role in that was the executor of Glenn's estate. I was listed as his next of kin. So from a legal standpoint, I was completely embroiled in all of this very public stuff happening. And, and I'm an action sports guy, right? I'm, I'm just right. hanging out with the seal fit crew, surfing, doing my consulting work. And all of a sudden I'm in this really public situation and Glenn's family and I talked and because Glenn had this amazing outgoing personality, we, we didn't want to just let his memory die and fade. So we decided to start a foundation uh, specifically to help special operators transition out of active duty military to civilian life, primarily through scholarship, and basically fill gaps in the GI Bill. And we had a lot of energy around, like, let's get this thing started, let's charge it. And we got it going early. It was like 2013, a couple months after Glenn passed, and boom, we're an established 501c3, and we're dishing out our first scholarships, you know, within a year. It was amazing. Yeah. Well, Glenn's memory, the, the movie comes out, things start to die down a little bit, and the foundation kind of hits a little bit of a plateau in 2017. Like, people just weren't as energetic about, um, I guess, charitable giving to a military cause. You know, like, there were other causes that people were doing, and then they were having trouble kind of breaking through that, that noise out there of charitable giving. And we had a conversation about how to do that, and no real resolve. It was just like an issue that was floating around out there. Well, around that exact same time, my wife introduces me to collagen. And uh, for anyone who doesn't know, collagen is the most abundant protein in the human body. And after you turn 20 or so, uh, your body stops producing it. So when you're like 25, you got all this collagen. And when you're 30, it goes down and 35 it goes down and 40 goes down and 50 it just gets worse and worse and worse well supplementing with collagen this amazing protein uh it is is super super easy 
and very, very effective. And we're talking, you know, check out WebMD and all the studies that talk about it. Like this is a, just a no BS single ingredient protein that helps all of your connective tissue. Well, I didn't know any of that at the time. I just dutifully obeyed my wife who said, and I quote, Sean, you're not getting any younger. I want you to start <laughs> taking this. Classy. That, that's, that's a great wife right there, man. Gotta love it. So, so I start taking collagen and, you know, within four weeks, my fingernails are growing like I'm the Wolverine. I've, I've said it before. Like I literally was like, where are the nail trimmers? And as a guy, you know, you don't always want to look for the nail trimmers. It's kind of a pain in the ass. Women are like, oh, my nails are going so strong. And I'm like, yeah, this sucks. Um, a week later, I needed a haircut. And so I'm looking at the jar of this product that my wife bought for me, and it's literally says hair, skin, nails, joint health. And that's why she bought it for me was the joint health. And, and Adam, this was the game changer for me. I was maybe like seven weeks and almost two months in on taking it dutifully every day, putting a scoop in my coffee because it's unflavored, heat-tolerant protein, and I'm doing my job. And we flew cross-country, landed in Boston from San Diego, ran – Every day for six days straight, like five, six miles a day, which is a lot for me. Like I wasn't running that kind of clip because my knees were so bad. And we get back on the plane, we fly home. Now I'm also a taller guy. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm almost 6'3". So flying coach on an airplane is rough. I feel you. We, we get off the plane and I'm grabbing our bags and I'm going to the shuttle to go to our car. And I kind of have this oh shit moment. And I literally stopped and I'm like, Heather, nothing hurts. And she's like, well, that's nice, dear. I'm like, no, 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 no. You don't understand. Nothing hurts. Like, I feel amazing. And the significance kind of caught up. And she's like, oh, wow. I'm like, I am going to be a collagen customer for the rest of my life. Like, I'm in. I've tried every supplement under the sun from creatine to whey proteins to hydration mixes to glucosamine you name it, it's a powder. I put it in a sports drink and tried it. Nothing in my life has worked the way this works. And so in 2017, I'm having this euphoric experience physically. And, um, and my buddy TJ comes over to the house a little while later and comes in and hangs out. And we're, he's my workout buddy. And we're pitching some work projects together. And he just sees a tub of college and we're sipping coffee. And he says, hey, uh... So you take that stuff, huh? And I, I tell him everything I just told you about how great it is, how great I feel. And he's like, cool. Well, let's start a company. Just like that. And we're laughing, right? Like, oh, yeah, sure. Sure, let's start a company. And uh, we look at each other. And we say, well, what does it look like? This, this lofty idea. And we both looked at each other. And at the exact same time, and this gives me goosebumps to this day, we both said, well, we got to do something cool for charity. And Adam, this light bulb just went off. I'm like, well, I know the charity and they need fundraising. And, and Glenn's call sign in the Navy was Bub. So let's start a collagen company. We'll call it Bub's Naturals. And we'll donate 10%, which is this huge lofty goal of everything we do to Glenn's charity. And... I took that idea with, with him and we just had this like, whoa moment. Like, is this real? And this was in like a 15 minute conversation. The company like came together like that. And um, here we are two and a half years later and we got the blessing of, you know, Glenn's family, Glenn's uh, Navy buddies, all the SEAL guys that I'm now friends with. Um, you know, I ran it by all of them. And, and the consensus was Glenn would kick your ass if you don't do this. Nice. So, <laughs> that's a good vote of endorsement. So, so yeah, we launched it. Um, we're just over $100,000 donated to event partnerships and direct contributions to Glenn's foundation. And I mean, I couldn't be happier with how, how it's been going. But yeah, very, very unlikely start to this conversation is it took my closest and best friend dying and a desire to celebrate his life and all that he stood for to kind of 
sparked this company. And, you know, it's really a tribute to Glenn. Um, it's one of the reasons we have the best collagen on the market. And I, I don't say that like uh, to be um, bragging. I say that based on our certifications with NSF for sport, our certifications with, you know, as a whole 30 approved brand, like we've really gone out of our way to show the world, Hey, don't take my word for it. But if I'm going to put Glenn's name on the jar, it is going to be the best in quality that you can get bar none. All right. So I want to unpack this a little bit because you just laid so much out there. The story is, is awesome. And I see it happen. You know, I deal with people on weight loss journeys and a lot of time their weight went the wrong direction because of a, a highly emotional moment, a death, a, a, uh, a divorce, a yeah. losing job, a tragic situation. And I always say like in any highly emotional moment, good or bad, it's like a spontaneous combustion and there's energy that's created and that can be used for good or it can be used for bad. <laughs> and, I, and I've seen both. Yeah. yeah. And, and you, I love the fact that you use that spontaneous combustion energy of this highly emotional moment. And you're like, how do I honor this memory? How do I keep the story alive? How do I just take that energy and move it forward and keep it living and breathing forever? Do you have any advice for people around that? Like how, what do you think the keys are to having that type of a reaction versus going down the depths of really, you know, depression feeling, you know, let the momentum really go in the wrong direction? Yeah. So, so when Glenn died, right. I mean, obviously it was a very national stage, but he had this incredible group of friends. We're talking hundreds of people that considered Glenn his best friend. And of course, Glenn was my best friend. Glenn would have been your best friend. And that's a big word, best friend. I'm not saying it lightly. So when you lose that person, that's so, so important in your life, you know, I did have that energy. I, I had that energy, but that energy was a call to action for me. So my personal call to action was I have to celebrate Glenn's life. I had very immediate things to do, like the planning of his, his memorial services and the celebration of life and these huge parties. And that was a great distraction for me not to look inside and feel the pit that was growing in my stomach. Um, I watched friends turn into just raging drunks. Um, around Glenn's death. Like they were already kind of like on that edge and this just put them over. I watched other people really, really dig deep and reinvest. And this is probably the gift people that had the ability to reinvest in relationships around them. So if there was advice I would give, um, I would say to expose yourself and be more vulnerable and by more vulnerable, I mean just more communicative around those that are close and important to you. Nothing is stronger in my opinion than laying yourself bare for your friends and family and allowing them to help you with this healing process, even if it's just to listen. So the ones that did the worst, they didn't express themselves with their words or, or with their vulnerabilities. They went out and pursued some bad habits. I'm happy to report that the, the most of those that, that did that have all come out of it. Um, but everyone's journey is different. The one common theme I think that can help everyone. And I learned the hard way because I buried myself for months before I opened up. And when I did, it was like the floodgates opened for me like three, four months later. It wasn't in the moment. I had so much to do. I built this busy life of, of, of getting this foundation going and doing all these things. It was only after the dust started to settle a little bit that I, I finally was like, what's this pit in my stomach doing here? What is that thing? And I started asking those questions and then it just, boom, it all came out. And I was like, oh, I... I need people to talk to about this. But I don't mean professionals. I just mean our friends, the people that loved Glenn the way I loved him or, or whoever your loved one is, like that, that common glue that we all have around that person who's gone. And there's such an amazing source of strength in your own community. Yes. Yeah, embracing community. And that's very appropriate for right now where we're dealing with quarantine and coronavirus times. And I know... If I just get together with a group of fellow podcasters or fe fellow like fitness enthusiasts like yourself and just talk and just share ideas and share energy, it helps so much. And yeah. there's three simple words, you know, ask for help. You, it's not one of those situations like I got myself into this mess. Now I got to get myself out. Like that's the long road to getting to a better place. The, the fast track is asking for help. So um, yeah. 
Wise just exposing, words. yeah, just starting the conversation. I mean, you don't even have to ask for help if you're too proud. It, you don't even don't even think of it that way. Just you're just having a conversation, yeah. and that conversation happens to be around grief. It happens to be around the loss of someone. And again, very personal experience. It, your loss, Adam, is going to be different than my loss. And we have a, we can create a common understanding around that and an empathy. Um, but if I don't talk to you about it, that conversation doesn't happen. And I keep those feelings and thoughts locked up inside of me. And that turns into that pit. And that pit does not serve you. Yeah. yeah. So. I, um, I but yeah, man, wild, wild stuff. I mean, I, I, sometimes I'd rather just go ride powder on a snowboard than <laughs> think about all that. But hey. <laughs> so, so the other question that pops up continuously as I hear your story is like, I started to hear a buzz about collagen protein like two and a half years ago. I started to see other influencers talking about it. And like everything I learned about it makes a hundred percent sense. I'm like, this makes sense. It needs to be in my body. This just is a no brainer. Why in the hell am I just, are we just now figuring this out? Like how, how has this not been something since like the eighties when whey protein was happening? Like, why is this just now starting to come to the forefront? People are like, yeah, collagen, that's a good idea. It's, it's really funny. So collagen is the, like I said earlier, it's the most abundant protein in your body. It is a connective tissue protein. It basically think of it as the glue that holds your body together, hair, skin and nails, your bones, your intestines, your muscles, your joints, they're all things that hold the body together. So the idea that this protein is everywhere is something that is, it's been known like collagen is a protein is a very known thing scientifically, <clears throat> but no one was thinking about ingesting it as a possible way to combat the loss of collagen over years. So it was just sort of accepted. You're going to get older and it's going to suck. Well, the tip of the spear people back in the 80s and 90s were taking Knox gelatin, which is essentially a bone gelatin, yeah. and it has a high collagen content, and they were taking this jello and plowing it into their systems to eating jello and jello and jello to get a little collagen supplementation. Well, nobody is going to subscribe to like a 100 gram jello diet every day. It just <laughs> <laughs> There's always room for Jello, Sean. So, so sometime around, I gosh, I guess it was like 2012. We're, we're talking less than 10 years ago, eight years ago. Um, you know, the mad tinkerers in the lab realized that collagen, which is best sourced from the hide of cows, not the bones, were like, hey, all this hide that we we're taking right now, and we're actually throwing it away. What can be done with this stuff? And they realize, hey, the amino acid profile in all of this connective tissue in the hide is perfect. And they turn it into a powder, which is a really simple process. You literally like just take it all, you boost the, the you put all these enzymes in a slurry, the amino acid profile goes through the roof, you dry it out, grind it out, throw it through a spray dryer. Uh, There's maybe a few more steps than that. And, um, and you get this single ingredient ground up powder. And if you do it well, it does not taste like a cow, which is very unpleasant. Uh, it doesn't smell like a cow. And it dissolves seamlessly into your coffee or your tea or a smoothie, or you can cook with it. And it's heat tolerant. So this just happened in the last six, seven, eight years. And it didn't enter the market until, you know, maybe around that time. And it sort of slowly crept in. And it took, you know, years to build it into the conversation. And it's still tip of the spear. I mean, collagen is not a household name by right. any stretch. So when I discovered it, it was still on that super early side. My commitment to, to getting involved in the collagen space was based around flavor and solubility. Those were kind of the marks to me. I'm like, hey man, if, if you can put a product out there that is truly flavorless and has the highest solubility, that's going to make it adaptable. Because Adam, if I gave you a tub of bubs or, or any brand of collagen and it smelled bad and it tasted bad, you know, no one's pounding castor oil and there's a reason for that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, it, it wasn't around. It just got, you know, kind of the, this, this upcycling of this throwaway hide um, suddenly found a new home. So it's great being a part of an industry that 
takes, uh, you know, trash essentially like this, this product that was getting chucked in the landfills and gives it this great, healthy, you know, wholesome purpose. Yeah. The whole like nose to tail concept, uh, our, our mutual friend, Danny Vega is big on that. Like, yeah, it's something that I really believe in as somebody like I hunt and, you know, with game animals, we try to make use of, uh, as much of the animal as possible. So it makes me feel good that more of that animal is being used and not, not just wasted and thrown away. And yeah. The benefits dude, like, so, uh, just to be out there and upfront with the audience, like you, we talked a little bit over a month ago, about six weeks ago. And, uh, you sent me some stuff. You're like, just take this every day for at least 28 days and then check back in. And by week three, so like day 21 through 28, I've been, we're, we're recording this in May. Um, I've been dealing with severe elbow tendonitis. Like, like I can't sleep very well, elbow tendonitis in both elbows for since December and oh. day 21 done. Like it, I noticed it was getting better, but three weeks with the collagen, I, I'm back to like doing heavy pressing, no problems. I can grip stuff. And it's just like, I was like, it's kind of like you when you got out of the airplane, like, damn, like this is different. And I don't change multiple things at once in my, my program. I, I'm, I'm very strict about that. Like there's, if I want to test something to see if it works, I only switch that one variable and everything yeah. else stays the same. Yeah. Single variable so that you can get better authentic results. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And the fingernail, the Wolverine fingernails, uh, looking for the nail clippers, you know, doing, doing that deal. Um, but no, it's, it's noticeable. And I, I think that like, especially coming from like a ketogenic diet perspective, this fills a lot of gaps. There's a lot of people on keto, which a large part of our audience, it comes from the keto community and lower carb. They're dealing with like thinning hair and, you know, and things yep. like that. And, you know, also if you like going carnivore, again, our friend Danny Vega is big on collagen because of the glycine that's in it to help combat some of the potentially negative aspects of carnivore diet. So having those components, collagen's really filling some gaps in there. And that's something that I think a lot of keto people can get on board with. Yeah. You know, it's funny. Two things. Um, one of Danny Vega, who obviously is big in the keto space, one of his close friends, a guy named Ben Pakulski, who's kind of a big muscle lifter, strong guy. And, and his partner at Muscle Intelligence is a woman. Uh, we just call her the Muscle Maven, uh, Ashley Van Hooten. Yep. And Muscle Maven, I'm going to blow the lid on her scene. She has a cookbook coming out that is nice. all dedicated to tip to tail and everything in between. I can't wait for it. Um, but kind of going back to the idea of a ketogenic diet and some of the some of the protein needs that are there, that alignment for us was a really natural one. Um, TJ's goes in and out of ketosis all the time. I'm more of a Mediterranean diet person. Um, I eat for my blood type. I've, I've subscribed to that logic for the better part of a decade. So O positive is more of a paleo based diet. Um, so I kind of steer in that direction and I've had you know great results from that. Um, but the keto audience and Danny Vega have really responded well to our product and they've kind of naturally adapted it or adopted it into into their programming. And then our second product was MCT oil. Yep. So it's really funny because we didn't mean to like go into being this massively keto um, focused business. It just happens to have very keto friendly objectives. So when people want to start their morning with an MCT oil, we do an MCT oil and a powder, just two ingredients, just our MCT oil, which is all virgin press, sustainably sourced and sprayed into tapioca starch. Yeah. And so tapioca starch, really low sugars, low carbs. It's like the keto dream. So we're like, oh, wow, look at this. Hey, so this is the best tasting, which is, again, flavor, solubility. It passed that metric for me. And then when we realized it was going to be keto friendly, we're like, well, this is fantastic because this is an audience that really cares what they're putting into their body. Yeah. And we want to meet them where they, we want to meet them where they are. Yeah. Um, and, and it worked well. Yeah. So let's talk quality a little bit because whenever we talk about specific products, the natural inclination of the audience is to go and price check and, and compare and contrast. So yeah. if they're going to go online and search around collagen or go on Amazon and just type in collagen, uh, let's start there. Like what, what do you want to look for? Things like, like grass fed and like where it's sourced, like what, yeah. what's the checklist of avoid this, this is bad, this is good. So in general, just like in anything in life, you get what you pay for. 
Um, I didn't set out to come out to market with a $20 collagen that was the most affordable product. I, I didn't want that because I bought those products and I've tasted those products and I've used those products and they're horrible. And, and that is a purely subjective statement that is backed up by every review on Amazon. Um, <laughs> so, so when you're shopping for a, a quality collagen, there's things that I look for. Um, sourcing. Where's this stuff coming from? Is it coming from Korea? Um, there's a, not a lot of transparency coming out of some areas there. Maybe that's not what I want. Uh, is it coming from South America? Well, South America could be interesting, but where in South America? Is it from the rainforest, which is under a, a massive amount of, you know, kind of political societal um, attack right now for the deforestation? Or is it from a conflict-free zone? Um, is it single sourced? Is it from a variety of sources? There's a lot of things like that, that if you pop the hood, you can kind of, you can see from a company's claims, what they're, what they're offering. So we're single sourced, which is important. Grass fed pasture raised to me is that's just a table stake. Every brand should be grass fed and pasture raised. And that's because cows thrive in a more natural environment. Grain fed cows do not process the grain the same way. Um, it's not as healthy of a tissue and therefore it's not going to turn into as healthy of a collagen. So avoid the grain. Um, and, and then you always want it to be unflavored in my opinion, unless you're a chocolate or vanilla person, that's, if that's your jam. I like things that are unflavored because I know that I'm just dealing with a pure single ingredient, which is the last thing I look for is that cleanliness. Now, there are flavored collagens out there that can do wonders for you. Um, and one of the things that's also worth looking into is think of the other components of your diet. So, okay, I'm shopping online. I see grass-fed, pasture-raised, single-source, um, and then certifications. How many of them are NSF certified? Well, the National Sports Foundation, like the highest level of nonprofit accreditation for quality and sports supplements. How many of our NSF for sport certified and boy are they whole 30 approved i mean no one is more rigorous than whole 30 when it comes to eating whole foods um and if they have those badges you're dining at the top and and from there it's really a personal choice do you like a brand that's you know charitably minded we might be the right brand choice for you uh if you're like no no i don't care i just want to save five bucks there's another brand around the corner that probably has a pretty good product um we wanted to take good product and take it to great. That was, that's kind of why we're here. Um, but you know, there's a lot of, there, there, there are a lot of things to look for. So yeah. grass fed, pasture raised, non GMO, uh, is it single sourced, a country of origin, and then look for those third party, um, you know, validations. Because if I tell you we've got a great product, you can be like, yeah, bro, you own the company, so <laughs> you don't count. <laughs> <laughs> Here's my testimonial. Um, so you mentioned earlier about sourcing from the hide versus like the joints and bones, et cetera. Are there companies out there that are, that are doing it that way, that, that aren't using the hide collagen? Yep. Yeah, absolutely. So most every brand out there um, just sources from multiple suppliers, right? So, so right there from a traceability standpoint, you – you kind of suffer a little bit because it could be coming from a lot of different areas. Well, it's not the end of the world, but that does mean that your quality for flavor and solubility can, can go up and down. So it's, you know, that's not a knock. It's just, it's a mixed bag. Um, then second to that is some companies uh, use bone. Um, so obviously there's a lot of talk around bone broths and beef bone broth, chicken bone broth, um, you know, on all your whole foods and markets you can get, you can find that. And there's a lot of good collagen. That amino acid profile in collagen is in the bones. Um, bone sourced collagen is a little tougher on the stomach. So if you have a sensitive tummy, uh, the bone's probably not the best way to go. So okay. from, a, from an amino acid profile and from a quality standpoint, looking for the hide source is always going to be your best bet. Um, nice. Nothing against the bone product. It's just a little cheaper. Uh, it's a little rougher on the guts um, and it's just not quite as powerful. So yeah. I'm a hide guy. That makes sense. He's a hide kind of guy. <laughs> uh, so the next natural question is dosing. I, I want to make sure our audience knows what is going to be that effective dosing pattern that we know that if we do this, then we're more likely to be doing something positive for our body. Yeah. Well, 
I kind of go against our own packaging when I say this, but whenever I'm introducing something new into my system, um, I usually start with a little less than whatever the recommended daily dose is. So your daily average recommendation for collagen is 20 grams a day, two scoops. Um, I started with 10. So when I told you that I was feeling my fingernails and like my hair growing, that was one scoop a day. And then I was like, whoa, what happens if I double it down? And then, you know, the benefits really kicked in. The fact is your body can take 40, 60, 80 grams of collagen a day and it's going to absorb it. It's not going to like pee it out or, you know, it's not going to be put to waste. So it's definitely an adaptable source of protein. Um, I should also state just for anyone who's, who, who pays attention to the protein intake, collagen is a connective tissue protein. It is an incomplete protein. It does not include the amino acid tryptophan. So when you think of protein and like growing big muscles, that's your whey protein. That's your other protein sources. This is more about the recovery and the health of your connective tissue. So nice. um, just to make sure that separation yeah. is out there. So when I work out, I might take uh, a vegan protein with collagen. So I'll get my chocolate, you know, Vega shake over here, and then I'll add a little bit of collagen to that. Yeah, and that's the thing I like about your product is it's since it's unflavored, it's very easy to add to other things. Like you said, bake with it, uh, do the Bub's Brew. Give, tell them what the Bub's Brew is, Sean. You got, you got to give the- us the, the secret here, man. So I start every day with this. So a big old pot of coffee. Well, I, we're not going to dive in my entire morning routine. That would probably take too long, but we'll just go to the coffee part. Make a pot of coffee in the morning, uh, two cups, and I put two scoops of collagen and one scoop of our MCT oil powder, which is kind of like my non-dairy creamer. And that combo of protein and that mental focus and energy, and you're seeing the results of it now. I can barely sit still. Um, the amount of energy that you get from MCT and that satiation from the protein, it's an amazing one, two punch. So we call it our bubs brew. Um, I start every day with that two scoops of collagen, one MCT, a little milk frother to buzz it all up and boom. It tastes great too. That, that MCT with like the, the hint of coconut flavor. It's good. It's good stuff mixed with the, with the coffee. And I've done it with cold brew too. Like you said, make sure it's hot. Like I, I'll, uh, I'll add cold brew to that whole mix and it's fine. And it, it mixes up nice. So uh, yep. give that a shot people. Now, are, are there any recommendations? Sometimes you hear like, Oh, you should take vitamin C because that increases absorption with it. Or like, is there anything that you should or should not ingest at the same time as collagen? Well, that's actually a great, great point. Um, and, and <laughs> it's like a tease to something we have coming out in Ooh. about a month from now. Um, So vitamin C is actually the best friend of collagen. And anywhere you go to look for collagen, and if you type in collagen vitamin C, it's peas and carrots. So the vitamin C really helps activate the collagen synthesis. So it's a a wonderful companion. Well, vitamin C in your coffee is a little bitter. And it will denature. And it will not be fun. (laughs) But if you take vitamin C in your diet, maybe you're a you eat a lot of kale or you, you supplement with just a vitamin C pill, um, then you're, you're getting it. So we kind of looked at that. And, and with Dr. Lyon, who we talked about earlier, we talked about vitamin C and collagen, how to bring the two things together and what would be a, a good effective way of doing that. So we actually are rolling out um, our first flavored formula called the Bub's Fountain of Youth. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> nice. It's a little nod to, to when Glenn and I were aching and sore going, man, what's the fountain of youth and how do we get there? And, and we came up with one that has maki berry, which is a really powerful antioxidant. It's like the acai berry on steroids. It's, it's just a, got a great antioxidant property, biotin. And we put a thousand milligrams of vitamin C, organic vitamin C per scoop. So every serving you get a thousand milligrams. And we, we looked at what all the other brands were doing that have vitamin C and they were like 100, 200 milligrams. And we're it's like, nothing. no. Yeah. Well, look, at if your body only absorbs 50% of the supplementation that it's taking in from a vitamin source, then you need that full dose, which is why they say, hey, take a 1,000 milligram vitamin C. You're going to get the proper amount into your system. Yeah. Well, we want the same thing. I don't ever want something that's not going to be effective. I want the most effective thing I can offer folks. So our biotin, the panathenic acid, 
uh, the calcium, everything that's in there is meant to really be in, you know, an effective dose. So that, that rolls out in about a month or so. But yeah, vitamin C is your friend when it comes to collagen. And Bubs will then have a patent on the fountain of youth. That's, yes. that's the key. <laughs> <laughs> that's 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 pretty impressive. And Adam, um, aren't we all chasing that, right? <laughs> well, I, that's what I was just thinking. Like back in my heyday, I competed in powerlifting. You know, I was heavy. You know, doing Scottish Highland Games, throwing telephone poles and stones and stuff. And I beat the hell out of my body and my joints. And I'm paying for that now. Like I'm, I turned 40 this year, and I was just talking to a, a group of my community members last night in our, our community chat. And I'm like, yo, I'm pretty motivated, but. If my body doesn't cooperate, it doesn't matter how much motivation I have. So doing things like the collagen routine, that's, that's an investment in me being able to just max out my potential in this stage of my life and be able to, to lift like I want to lift and exercise and move. And then, you know, uh, seeing I mean, that as a long-term investment as like my, being with my kids and being able to play basketball and stuff like that. Like it's a huge deal. Yeah. Adam, you just nailed it. I, I work out so that I can enjoy the other parts of my life. Like I exercise and you know, I'm a big CrossFit enthusiast and kind of functional fitness guy, but I want to surf better. I want to snowboard better. I want to do whatever I want to do and just be able to show up and really like put my best effort forward. That starts with my family. If I can't show up for my wife and show up for my two kids, I'm a puddle. I'm useless. <laughs> so, yeah. you know, it's like an investment in myself. Like I, I owe it to them and to my, you know, the, the people that I hold responsibility and accountability around to, to do this. And, you know, again, it works. It, it's simple. There's no, you know, there's, there's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. You're going to lift stronger. You're going to feel better. I mean, what was the joke I told you when we first met? I'm like, it's like getting 10 years back on your life. Yeah. Yeah. And that's what a whole lot of people in my community are, are looking for. And I'll, I'll continue to, to uh, take the product and report into you guys that are listening. And if you have any questions about it, uh, just hit me up uh, at million pound mission on Instagram. Uh, the Bubs Naturals IG page is on fire, man. Yeah. Sean, I, I was, you know, kind of egging him on. Like, the, the, you said you and TJ did podcast episodes for a little bit, but we stopped. Like, I think there needs to be a Bubs cast. Because I feel like, Sean, I feel like you're a guy that has about 10,000 really interesting stories to tell uh, from the life that you've lived. And you, those stories need to be out there, brother. Maybe some of them don't. Maybe. <laughs> maybe we should keep a couple of them under wraps. Um, no, yeah, you know, I mean, it is funny. Like it's, I, I couldn't have scripted where I am today talking with you, which is amazing. Yeah. Like the idea that I can be 49 years old and meeting up with great people and making these connections and changing people's lives is the most amazing thing ever. I mean, I remember when I was working at DC shoes, which is a part of Quicksilver. And I was just a little bored with like, sign the new athlete to the sports contract and here's your new ad campaign. And, and it's all cool stuff. And it was in snowboarding. So I loved it, but I just wanted something a little different. And I didn't know what that was. It was just this like itch. Well, when I discovered CrossFit and, and fitness, I joined a gym and I remember the owner is a former seal named Mark Devine. He said, Hey, uh, you got to go out and get your coaching certificate. And I'm like, what? Like, no, I've got a day job. Like, I'm, I'm this marketing guy, this and that. And he said, no, 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 no. You need to coach. And I was like, okay. So I went out and I, I got what they refer to as your level one coaching certificate for CrossFit. And Mark Devine and Glenn and I were all coaches at Mark's gym. And Mark Devine is kind of famous for seal fit. Oh, and yeah. So he's, and he's a great friend of mine. He was at my wedding. Like, him and Sandy, his wife, are just two phenomenal humans. Um, and, and he, he basically made me coach. And so I will never forget the amount of immense satisfaction that I got from teaching one of the clients, this woman who was maybe in her late thirties, had a family and she was trying to get her fitness back. And I remember teaching her how to do her very first pull-up, something as simple as a pull-up. And we worked on it for weeks, right? And I was only coaching there at like six o'clock in the morning or six o'clock at night. And she would be one of those people. And we talk about it. Like I see her every once in a blue moon and she'd be like, you taught me my first pull up. <laughs> and Adam, the amount of satisfaction I got from helping her who, you know, I didn't have any investment in her. She yeah. was one of the clients at the gym, but man, that filled me up. Yeah. And I was like, wow, there's something else out there that's not, the sports marketing side of life that 
can be amazingly satisfying and it's has nothing to do with me. It's helping someone else achieve their goals. And it's, I think that's something you can relate to. Yeah. Yeah. It's the gift that we're both trying to, to put out there and give to people. You know, we've experienced things. We want to take those and empower others. And that's, that's what I love about what you're doing, your, your brand. And that's why I'm excited to connect you to, to my community here. And uh, along those lines, like what's the best way to get plugged into the, the bubs world. If people want to, plug into what you guys have going on, uh, what you're all about, connect with you on social, like where's the spot? Yeah, well, so uh, probably our, 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 our main hub is Instagram. So uh, at Bubs Naturals, uh, plural, B-U-B-S-N-A-T-U-R-A-L-S. And we host a couple Instagram lives every week. Uh, we have this really eclectic family of friends of former NFL players. Uh, Dr. Lion is actually going to happen soon. Chris Spieler, CrossFit legends, yep. um, all different walks of life, Titan games, participants. Yep. Yep. <laughs> and we just, we really just wrap out and talk about, Hey, what's going on. And we kicked it off during COVID. We kicked it off during this home isolation as a way to try and not normalize the experience, but make it more understandable and say, Hey, how are you going through this wherever you are geographically? What are your family conditions like? Like, what are you what are you experiencing? And it naturally rolls into health and wellness, and you know, it's all normalizing the experience. So, if there is someone who's out there who finds that this current situation is somewhat unrelatable, you realize that it is actually relatable. So, our social handle is a, is a great way to foster that communication, and we are always answering questions on there from our Instagram. You can DM us; we're always going to respond. Um, and then, you know, our, obviously our website is, is where we really kind of showcase our story and who we are. Uh, and that's just bubsnaturals.com. And then Facebook is of course, bubs naturals. Um, and that's really, that's really us. And of course, Amazon, I, I can never ignore the Amazonians out there. <laughs> um, we are Amazon's choice and Amazon prime. So kind of the added benefit of having both the official Amazon nod of, Hey, we like you guys yep. and we'll ship it to you fast. <laughs> yeah, yes. With with my robo drone uh, teleporter teleportation collagen device, that boom, it's there. Like, I've been working on it. We've been we, working on you it. You need to work with Amazon where you just order it and then it's in your body. Like you don't even have to like swallow it. It's just there. It just shows mm. up in your body. That's the next level. Let's the next the next time we we talk, there's going to be a little spoon that just sort of drops down from the ceiling, <laughs> and pops right into your mouth. <laughs> Sky spoon technology. <laughs> invented by pubs natural uh does your company have sky spoon i don't think so no, uh all right patenting that as we speak <laughs> hashtag sky spoon all right i want to end i want to kind of bring it all the way around here because i know that there's a lot of people out there you know, with, with your story you talked about how one of the goals of the foundation that you put together is to help military members transition into civilian life more effectively and not have to do that. Like I have to be in that military role that, you know, risking my life long term. Like if, if that's what you want to do, cool, but it's, it's there are options. So yeah. like, what can we do as civilians? Like some, if a family member, a friend comes back from serving, they're kind of ready to wrap up their, their career in the military. Like what can we do to help? You know, obviously we can, we can donate, we can buy Bob's products and things like that. But like mentally from a friendship standpoint, any suggestions out there on how we can actually help those people? Yeah, a hundred percent. So um, helping them make that successful transition, it could be as simple as sharing, you know, your own experiences with them, which are completely different. Remember, however long they serve, four years, six years, 20 years, they only know that block of kind of rules, regulations, and protocols that they've been following to a T. Yeah. So entering the workforce can be a paralyzingly fearful experience for a lot of members of the military, not just special operators. That, that happens to be who we work closest with, but it's not easy. And, and acknowledging that and being there to say like, hey, let me tell you what I went through. Here's how I wrote a resume, or here are some of my job experiences, and you make it relatable. Um, because it is relatable. Like there's yeah. still tasks that have to get done under a certain timeline with certain objectives, just like in any job. And then you measure the success of those tasks. Well, it can feel like there's this huge gap there and it's, it's really normalizing that. So if you know someone who's getting out of the military, creating more and more dialogue with them will open those doors up. Um, 
there's a ton of, you know, suicides coming out of the military. We know that we know that there's a lot of depression. There's a lot of very hard transitional issues and mental health issues. So being available is sometimes the greatest gift you can give. Um, it's kind of like the grief thing that we talked about earlier. It's if you hold it all in and these, these are stoic individuals, right? Like they're going to hold it all in. You give them that opportunity to share and the tools so there's an amazing group called Mentors for Military. Uh, it's a nonprofit, and their entire existence is built around mentoring transitioning members of the military out to civilian life. So there are a variety of tools like Mentors for Military. And, you know, if you have a buddy who's getting out, be like, hey, man, have you ever checked these guys out? I, I listen to their, you know, messaging or I, I'm on their email list and it might be something helpful for you. Like, you never know. But if you yeah. offer it and you start the conversation – you can, you can help someone else. So that, that's probably the, the best thing. It's not a one size fits all solution in anything in life, but there are, again, you can just be there for your buddies um, and, and, and help them out just by being there. That's great advice. And I appreciate you sharing that. I know a lot of people want to help, but they aren't sure how. So that, that is uh, some great actionable advice. And that's, that's what we're all about here on the show is doing things that we can, whether it's taking collagen or helping out a friend, it's about making progress in the right direction, furthering our lives, not being stagnant and uh, keeping, keep on building our personal momentum. So, uh, Sean, dude, you're awesome. I love your heart. I love the way you just put it out there and the way you deliver energy. And you're one of those energy borrowers. You're like, plug into this a little bit, you know, Bub's nation and you'll, you'll get plenty of energy coming back in your direction. So I love what you're doing. I can't wait to see where things, uh, end up, uh, in the next few months with the momentum that you're creating with the new stuff and the, the fountain of youth patent, uh, all, all of that stuff. Uh, I'm super excited about that. And I appreciate you taking some time to, to invest in our community here today. Yeah, absolutely. Adam. And for anyone out there, I mean, literally DM us, ask us any questions, uh, reach out to me. Adam always knows how to get a hold of me, but, um, I, I'm psyched for this opportunity to kind of share a little bit of our story. Talk with you again, like-minded individuals, right? Like, there's a reason we got connected and put together months ago and, and here we are today. So I, I look forward to building on this uh, with you and your community in the future and uh, keep it in touch. All right, my friends, it's time to set that implementation alarm. You know that I want to entertain you. I want to inspire you, but I want you to take action. So in the last hour, what's that one thing that really sparked in your mind? Maybe it's something about investing and some collagen protein, investing in your health. Maybe it's about talking to a friend that just got home from serving in the military, but set that alarm for 24 hours from right now. I know you're on your phone. Set the alarm. Take action before that alarm goes off in the next 24 hours. And that, my friends, is how we get out there and own it. Every meal, every workout, every day. I will see you on the next episode. Hey, thanks for listening to this episode. I hope you got a ton out of it. If you feel like you need a little bit of a boost, a little bit of an accountability buddy, a little bit of coaching, I've got my 28-day coaching program open and ready to help. Uh, you can go to millionpoundmission.com and apply. I take a few people each week. I like to stagger them out as we onboard new people so you get maximum attention. We're touching base every week with video chats. We've got a daily Google Doc that I call the Client Hub that we check in with on a daily basis. We really dig in with your macros, your calories, your fitness. I supply all the resources you need in all those areas, and it's supportive accountability to help you burst through that, that plateau, to reverse your momentum from negative to positive, and really get after those goals that you've been shooting for for so long. It's time to go from goal setting to goal achieving, and the 28-day coaching program is the way to get it done. Head on over to millionpoundmission.com and submit your application today.